Who can do the most in Epcot and Hollywood Studios in one day? If I don't make it in time, it's over. People say this is a half day park. We're going head to head to find out. And it's gonna get really nice and friendly. Ugh. Okay, we are rope dropping Epcot. It is nine o'clock on the dot. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it is busy today. It is, uh, today at uh, the time of filming, it is officially President's Day, which is a holiday that a lot of people, uh, specifically schools, they have off. So people take this weekend to enjoy a nice three day uh, weekend here at Disney World. Yeah, a little long weekend and boy is it showing. We both are using Genie Plus today and it was $35. Have you seen our previous Rise Race videos? Typically you say that you want us to uh, start in different parks, but we did that last time. The reason we are starting in the same park this time is because Animal Kingdom opened a full hour earlier, which means <laughs> Emma had a huge head start. Well, today, uh, Hollywood Studios opened a whole 30 minutes before, and we want to make sure that this is the fairest rides race possible. Yes. So that's where we are starting at Epcot. Starting on even footing. Even even footing, and uh, we'll see what our strategies are. Mine's a little chaotic today, I'm not going to lie. Well, I don't have one, so it's going to get pretty <laughs> exciting well, for everyone involved, myself included, when I find out where I'm going. The no strategy strategy is probably the most cha chaotic of all. That's fair, but most people do that on their Disney vacation, so it's gonna be great. <laughs> well, we both made it to Norway. I assume you're gonna go rope drop uh, the China. 360? I am actually on my way to test track, which is crazy. <laughs> I don't know how I got over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I, the, uh, originally, the plan was to rope drop uh, Frozen Ever After because we'll talk about strategy in a second. But the but the line is all the way out here. Okay, be honest. Was your was your strategy to rope drop Frozen? It was, and I knew we were a little behind, but I did not think it would be this. We were not. We're, we 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 were here for a rope drop, so I don't know how behind we would be. But it was already a 95 minute wait because of early entry. I'm not gonna lie. This might be the most painful ride race we've done today. At nine nine oh six, that's the line for the meet and greet for. Um, to, to meet on an Elsa, it's all the way out the building. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness I didn't have a strategy. I'm going with the flow here. Going with the flow, that's a good strategy. That's all you can do sometimes on weekends like this at Disney when it is so busy. You can still have your priorities and you can still utilize Genie and everything, but sometimes you might just have to go with the flow. All right, um, I think we should take four seconds. Do Grand Fiesta. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not kidding. So I'm, not <laughs> I'm taking a step back so Emma can't hear me. Here's my strategy today. My, it's, it's might be super crazy and chaotic, but I think I'm going to avoid all of the most popular rides because one, they're going to have the highest wait time. Two, they're typically the longest. And three, I think I can get everything I need to get done by riding all the filler attractions between all the characters and potentially the occasional popular ride if if it works out that I happen to get a, grab a lightning lane for it. But I think we're gonna do everything filler today and hope for the best. Grand Fiesta Tour is a slow moving boat ride where you try to find Donald because he's gone missing. The three caballeros have a performance to do in Mexico City, but no one knows where Donald is. I know where Donald is, he's enjoying Mexico. You know where Donald is? Yeah, I know where Donald is. Why don't you tell them? He, you know, because listen, it. They have a performance tonight. I know, but they've 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 got to work on their own things. They've been going to therapy for years. We did Grand Fiesta Tour. Test track has opened, so I made my way over to do the single rider, hopefully. Normally single rider, this is a great single rider option. There are not tons of single rider options throughout Disney World, and some of them honestly don't work super well. Rock and roller coasters normally takes longer sometimes than it does to even go through the regular line, but this one tends to work fairly well. So we're gonna hop in line over here. Now you are gonna have to be separated with your party, but it is gonna go faster. Luckily, it's just me right now. 
I don't know what Sage is doing. We just split up. Uh, not, not a friendship, just like location wise. Oh. Uh, she's headed to test track single rider, but because single rider, I'm pretty sure is going to be uh, a low weight all day because it typically is. We typically have good luck with that um, single rider, specifically at test track, as well as uh, some of those run which we'll do later on today. I think we need to go diversify. And uh, I'm gonna head to Mission Space because I would hate to wait more than five minutes for Green Mission at Mission Space. Mission Space is a motion simulator attraction that Disney actually partnered with NASA to see if they can actually simulate real life rocket launches. Now there are two different sides to Mission Space. There's the orange mission and the green, green mission. The orange mission is super intense, lots of G-force, and the green mission is less intense. Uh, it just means you're gonna feel less G-force. You'll still get a similar experience, but on green mission, you're actually uh, traveling around Earth. You're kind of orbiting around Earth, where on the orange mission, you're actually traveling to Mars. And you each get a different uh, role. You're each assigned a role. You have different responsibilities. It's pretty cool. It's a similar, but a little more dated version of Smuggler's Run, which we'll do later on today, because this is less video game, more motion simulator, where it's the opposite for Smuggler's Run. All right, took about 10, a little bit over 10 minutes, but we're here and it's significantly less than 70. for maybe 20 minutes. It was a walk-on, it was amazing, because uh, who knows what's gonna happen later on throughout the day with Mission Space. So, let's keep on rocking. Oh, 30 minutes, that's wild. Oh, see, I just wanna show you how busy today is. 30 minutes for the Seas with Nemo and Friends. That's next level busy. It's, I just, it's just, I just don't know if it's worth it. All right, living with the land it is. Enjoyed Test Track a lot. It was very cold out there, so something to be aware of if you're gonna do it on colder days. Obviously, you get up to, I think, 64.9 miles per hour, and it's very chilly, so just be aware of that. Now, I think I'm probably gonna go grab Mission Space Green. That's right here, fairly close, and then we're gonna figure out where we're going from here. Now, a lot of times we fall into meeting characters because the lines typically aren't as long, but, on days like today, those lines are also going to be long. So I'm not really sure what to anticipate. Um, and that does make days like today a little bit harder because you do have to adjust strategy. You do have to go with the flow. And we're going to do that. It's going to be great. Bon dieu, bon dieu les ramen en séjour vers toi. Now, I don't know how the seas with Nemo and Friends was 30 minutes, and this is five minutes. So I feel like uh, it must have been down for a moment, and they just reopened it, which means we just lucked out. While we're in here, we're probably gonna do Awesome Planet, which is a uh, quick 10 minute movie, and see what's going on with Soren. The other thing I'm gonna do today with my strategy is I don't think I'm gonna book any lightning lanes here at Epcot. I think I'm just gonna continue to stack all day over at Hollywood Studios. In fact, the first thing I did this morning at seven o'clock, the first lightning lane I booked was for Slinky Dog Dash. Now, because Hollywood Studios opened at 8.30 and not nine o'clock like Epcot, that means the next lightning lane I can book is at 10.30 because you have to wait two hours after park opening to book your next lightning lane. And I know Emma, her first lightning lane was here at uh, Epcot, which means she can't book her next lightning lane until 11. So I'm hoping that that strategy worked out for me, knowing that I, I, I booked a lightning lane for a park that opened a little bit earlier, which means I can book uh, my lightning lane just that much earlier than Emma can. So hopefully that'll work out to my advantage. Green is only five minutes, but goodness, orange is 30. That's tough. So if you don't know a special, uh, you baby. I was gonna say special mace. Literally was about to say that with my mouth. Congratulations, team. You have been selected to train for a spectacular mission. Finished on Mission Space. 
Now, I will say, I was five minutes away for sure, but it ended up, I think it must have gotten stalled or something while I was waiting because that took me about 25 minutes. So, not great. The wait times look crazy right now. <laughs> Even Soren is about 65, Spaceship Earth is 45, the Seas with Nemo and Friends is 30. Lots of confusing things happening, but I think I'm gonna walk across um, towards the world nature, maybe hop on living with the land, do some of that fun stuff, and then maybe we can focus on some characters and shows for a little while. Just like that, we are off uh, living with the land. We're gonna wait a little bit, try and get a lightning lane for Soren. Uh, this, uh, I was looking at everything and I think I'm gonna have to adjust my strategy a little bit but because it's so busy and I'm probably gonna have to book something that's pretty close to the time right now. Made it to the land. So this is the land pavilion. Inside the land pavilion is where you're gonna find actually a few things. Soren is in here living with the land. Awesome planet uh, and sunshine season so handful of things. Oh and the garden grill which is wonderful and if you want to see a full review of that it's up on the channel right now but really like this area. And honestly, don't really know what I'm doing right now. Now I will say, if you come to Disney and you're having a day like we're having today, like it's just so busy, you're not entirely sure what to do, go grab food, go grab coffee. You know, if you've done your rope drop and the lines are looking crazy, consider just hanging out or grabbing a coffee and getting in a longer line. That's also not the end of the world. It's totally up to you, but just be, smart about utilizing that time. Are you, what are you doing here? You leaving? No, I was gonna go see Awesome Planet. I'm gonna, well, I was gonna do this, but then I noticed that line. Yeah, it's a pretty long line. Well, you wanna do Awesome Planet together? That's crazy. <laughs> oh, friendship. This is wild. It's, it's I, when, I, when I saw um, Finding Nemo, the season of Nemo, uh, the season of Nemo friends, it was a 30 yes. minute wait, I lost my mind. Awesome Planet is a 10 minute movie uh, that's all about planet Earth and it's narrated by Ty Burrell. You, you might know him better as Phil Dumphy from Modern Family. It's fun because he's actually playing a real estate agent uh, in this film as well as Modern Family. Uh, and he's basically selling you on buying planet Earth as if, as if it's, you know, we are going to move into it, which we already live here, but about how we got to take care of it and, you know, how it has amazing views and great couches <laughs> named the yeah, Grand it's Canyon. Nice. <laughs> it's a solid price. So the unthinkable has happened. I had to get a lightning lane for the, the seas with Nemo and friends, which is fine. It's, it's going to be super quick. I am getting in there, uh, like right at 10.45, which means once it's scanning, I'll be immediately able to grab something else. Now I am gonna double check to see what uh, Hollywood Studios is looking like. I think I might switch back to my other strategy and grab Hollywood Studios again, continue to stack over there. But everything, I mean, Spaceship Earth is 45 minutes. Um, but we've got other things we can do. We can go meet some characters. Oh my gosh, the seas is 45 minutes. All right, let's scan in, here we go. The Seas with Nemo and Friends is a dark ride, a slow moving dark ride, and it's a short retelling, a short but cute retelling of uh, Pixar's Finding Nemo. It's mostly told through screens and a couple uh, props, but there's a really cool moment at the end where like real fish, uh, the aquarium is combined with the cartoon world, which is, I think is super cool. But make sure after you do The Seas with Nemo and Friends, you stick around uh, to check out the aquarium. It is the second largest in the country. Uh, super cool things. And there's even a uh, show where you get to ask questions to Crush, who's the turtle from Finding Nemo. I was going to do Journey into Imagination by Figma. It is all the way up to 25 minutes. So not really where I'm headed today. Um, this might just be a character show, slower day. We're gonna do everything we can. And honestly, this is a very realistic day. We're still doing rides. We're just gonna kind of spread some things out a little bit. So now Figment is down here. You can meet Figment over here. You can also meet Mickey Mouse up here in the Disney and Pixar short film festival. It's actually about 20 minutes until the next show, which the show is about 16 minutes itself. So maybe we'll hop in line to meet Mickey and then be here for the next show. Mickey and Minnie are both back here today. They're in their Disney 100 getup and I actually haven't met them in these outfits. So pretty excited about this. It's very sweet. And this is typically one of the shorter lines that you'll find for Mickey. And the fact that he and Minnie are together, double points.
Okay, crew, we've only been waiting about 20 minutes for Mickey and Minnie. We're trucking along, no problems there. But I was working on my phone and I got completely distracted and forgot to make my lightning lane, which was available 10 minutes ago. Frozen is now completely sold out. Everything is down, to, like all the big rides are, Test Track's also gone. Soren's down to four o'clock, which makes me so sad because I really wanted to do Soren. Um, but even, you know, little smaller rides that typically don't go pretty far out, like Figment or Living With Land, are almost an hour out. So I weirdly grabbed a Figment, <laughs> um, hoping that maybe other lines will die down. But Figment is what we're going with today. And I feel so strange. And I, I wish I had more confidence in this moment to share with you. And I'm sorry that I don't. All right, so we successfully made it out. And uh, I, after checking all the options on uh, the My Disney Experience app, all the individual lighting lanes, what the times were, it looks like there's a lot of different uh, times now happening after four already. Uh, only, you know, still at 11 o'clock this morning already for Hollywood Studios. So I decided to go back to the strategy that I had before and I stacked uh, again. So right now we have two lightning lanes, both around four o'clock for Slinky Dog Dash and Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway. We're gonna continue to do that. Uh, we might have to make the occasional um, lightning lane here in Epcot, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep on stacking so that way we can hit a bunch of rides at the end of the night. And we might have to do some of the filler rides because there's more filler rides here in Epcot than there are in um, Hollywood Studios. But even then, it's so busy today that some of the filler attractions are 45 minutes long. So we're, uh, we're gonna do our absolute best today. We're gonna head into Journey of Water, which is a quick walkthrough attraction. We're gonna spend some time in here to make it count. And then uh, probably head to the uh, Imagination Pavilion. After getting showered on in 60 degree weather, hence the hoodie, um, <clears throat> we did it. It's been a long time since I have been to Journey of Water inspired by Moana uh, on a super busy day. And I always talk about, you know, oh, you know, go to Journey of Water. It's super tranquil and, and kind of relaxing to walk through. It's this lush and the, the water. Um, that was not tranquil. Uh, there is basically a, 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 a queue of maybe six people deep for each interactive um, water situation. Basically, uh, uh, the path is at like a traffic standstill as if you're on the highway and there's a big accident ahead. I mean, you can weave if you want, but people are waiting for these interactive experiences. Um, so not super tranquil. The line to take a picture with uh, Tafiti was, um, I wanna say 20 people. Uh, 20 to 25 people it was definitely a lot I, I would I would say not super worth it uh, because you're not gonna get a chance to really experience everything because there's so many people uh, but that's what happens on these crazy busy days journey into imagination is 50 minutes absolutely wild uh, I don't think it's worth it I think we're gonna have to uh, figure something else out maybe now is the time to go meet some characters because we are getting to the middle of the day maybe we'll see some movies to some attractions around the world showcase uh, I think that will be uh, a better, that, that will serve us better. Well, it looks like Figment just left, so we're just gonna meet Joy, and then I think we're gonna continue on our journey towards World Showcase to see uh, if we can find anything super filler, like uh, maybe see um, Canada Far and Wide, the uh, China movie, maybe the Beauty and the Beast sing-along, because that's a super small situation, but those are still attractions. Hi! So I'm do doing a competition with my friends, uh, and sh uh, so we're doing as uh, try we're trying to do a competition to see uh, as many things as we can do today, and whoever wins gets a prize. Uh, but you, uh, she's actually uh, she calls her team Team Anxiety, which is I, I know, but I know, but I I'm, I got to be Team Joy because I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be uh, 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 with you. Yes, yeah, so shall we take a picture? Hi, friends. How are you? Oh, you look so beautiful in your Disney 100 outfits. They're perfect. Do you guys mind if we take some pictures together? You want to watch the show? You want to watch the show? I'll watch the show. Stop. 
I almost I almost messaged you. I was like, I just saw Joy, and everything is so long. We have to do these filler attractions, yeah. and this is this is about a this is probably the longest thing I'll end up doing today. Yeah, I almost never do this because it rounds out about sixteen minutes. Yeah. But some of the wait times. Fourteen minutes for the next show. We got thirty-three glasses on the left there. Thank you. Everything is such a long wait time. <laughs> there is literally nothing else no, we, that's going to be less than waiting and watching the show right now. So the Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival is about a 16-minute um, movie. It's a little 4D. The seats move a little bit. But it's basically a combination of three different uh, Pixar shorts combined into one fun 16-minute uh, viewing. If, you're, if this theater is uh, recognizable at all to you, this is where Captain Ia used to be and Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. Definitely some Epcot classics. <laughs> also, this is where you can find Emma snapping it out. I love this place. <laughs> Unpo probably an unpopular opinion, I... I hope they would come back soon with something that's a little more specific and themed. I don't think that's unpopular. I think it's unpopular. I really genuinely like it. <laughs> okay, we just finished and really enjoyed the Pixar Short Film Festival. I love it. Feast is my favorite of the three. What, the Feast? Yeah. Oh, I'm a... Um... I love Get a Horse. I like oh, that. That's but all I, say. I like it. Feast horse. makes me cry most it's, of the time. It's very so cute. I really love it. Now I think we're parting ways again. I cannot believe we've been so lucky to act like legitimately run into each other twice before I shows. I love that you like think that's lucky because. Oh, you're just stalking me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So finally heading into Journey into Imagination with Figment. Uh, this is a classic Epcot ride that's kind of gone through several rethemes, and some are more popular than the other. First one being probably most popular. Not even a question, actually. Now, it has dropped to 35 minutes. It was 50 at one point, which is just wild. But have a lightning lane for it. It was the earliest one I could get. So we're going to hop on and make a new lightning lane immediately because it's within my two-hour window. And then maybe head into the World Showcase or watch some shows, meet some characters. We are going to start to make our way around the world. We're going to do some of these attractions, some of these movies, uh, maybe meet some characters. Uh, now, later on towards the end of the evening, we're going to start hitting up all these rides. We still have to go to Hollywood Studios. We still have to have lunch. But it is just no. such an insane day that we have no choice but to fill our time with filler attractions, specifically in order to get as many things done as possible and hopefully win this challenge. Now, during the time of filming, it is uh, the Festival of the Arts. There's only like maybe about a week and a half left before we switch on over to Flower and Garden Festival. Uh, you can even see some of the, uh, obviously some of the flowers are up, some of the topiaries are, are up. They're slowly getting ready for the festival. Which, if you have any questions about the Flower and Garden Festival, we will have a video up on the channel. I don't know which one is coming out first, whether it be this or the Flower and Garden Festival. But know that if you have any question about the Flower and Garden Festival, we're going to be here to do a full review. Uh, I know myself, Emma, Quincy, I don't know who else will be here. But pretty sure Breed Love and Fry will be here, maybe. But get your allergy pills, kids, because we're reviewing everything. And because we already went left, we started in Mexico, we actually rope dropped Grand Fiesta Tour, which is definitely a vibe. We're actually going to go right, and we're going to head to Canada Far and Wide which is uh, the attraction inside the Canada Pavilion. It is a quick movie narrated by Canadian comedians and superstars, two of my favorites, Catherine O'Hara and Eugene Levy. Now, if you were here anytime in 2023, you would know that almost all of Canada was kind of covered up because they were doing some construction, they were doing some refurbishments. But uh, Canada, she's looking gorgeous. No construction walls up anymore. We're gonna head the back way towards Canada Far and Wide. Now this is just me spitballing, but I always think uh, there should have been, I know there, would have, there was supposed to be a ride in the Germany Pavilion, but I think Canada is where the ride should be because of the rock work and the waterfalls. I always think Canada is a perfect um, area for a like a water raft ride, similar to Kilimanjaro Safari. But I mean, but look at this. There definitely, this should be the entrance to a ride for sure. Ooh, zero minutes until the next show. Ah, 14 minutes. Darn. Okay, really got scared on the figment ride. Now, it looks like his meet and greet is probably a little bit long for my taste. You can meet figment now. That's been going on for a little while. 
Um, and you can also meet Joy back here, which I know Sage has already done. So I'm gonna hop in line to meet Joy because it's significantly shorter. Um, and she's very cute and we all need a little Joy in our life. Amazing news. I walked in, I was like, oh, it's just, it's, uh, we, I just missed it. And they said, well, if, if you hurry, it, it, go on in. And I was like, you sure? They're like, yeah, go for it. And the cast member let me in and awesome, nailed it. It is 360 degrees all around you, which is very cool, but it's not a continuous 360 degrees there. It's still like, blo in, in like blocks and squares. So I think that's always, always a little interesting to watch. All of these movies have like a little bit of like a dated feel to it, even though it was recently, you know, redone, refer uh, re narrated by uh, Eugene uh, Levy and Catherine O'Hara. I think just because of the technology of the 360 degrees around you and the and it's not really continuous, it feels a little dated, but still a, a unique experience if you're interested to know more about Canada. The other thing I always tell people, I say, if if you're excited about Eugene Levy and uh, Catherine O'Hara and you think they're just going to be doing their Moira Rose accents and, and being hilarious, uh, you're going to be a little disappointed <laughs> because it's not a comedy. They'll make, you know, um, the occasional silly remark, but it is not a comedy. They are paying homage to Canada, uh, everything uh, that Canada offers, and, you know, because they're from Canada. They love it. They want to they wanna do it proud. They want to show respect. So it's not a super funny uh, movie. Uh, it is truly just about Canada and um, everything it has to offer. We made it to the France Pavilion. We are skipping Remy's Ratatouille adventure today. I know Emma is not, uh, just because I'm linked to her My Disney Experience app. Uh, oh, it says six minutes. Uh, it, I, I believe she did, this was her first lightning lane of the day. She did purchase that, which I know she'll do that a little bit later on. But I am skipping Remy's because my priority is lightning lanes for Hollywood Studios and filler attractions. So, let's uh, see the Beauty and the Beast sing-along. Hi, how are you, friend? Doing good, joyful, I'm sure. You look beautiful today, of course. I love the dress. It's been a little bit gloomy today, so I needed some joy in my life, right? Just ugly weather. Mind if we take some pictures? Okay, champs. So just mark those checks off the list. We got Figment, the ride, Journey into Imagination. And then we got Joyce, which was very nice. Joy took literally no time, really fast uh, interaction and line. So that was great. Now, oh, I will say, I talked to some friends in line. I'm so sorry I did not grab their names, but it was the nice family. Um, and they had just met Joy. And she was, we were just talking about how crazy the crowds are today. And she said that she waited 40 minutes, 40 minutes in the lightning lane for Nemo because there were so many complications and just long lines. So really, it is just a tough day out here, but any day in Disney is a good day. And we're gonna make it so, and it's gonna be great. So now I think I'm gonna head back maybe towards Canada, start doing some 360 action, checking out maybe some characters and just seeing where we fall in that area. Also, it has been a gloomy morning, which is fine. Honestly, sometimes I'll take a gloomy but not too cold morning over like a boiling hot one. Um, but I had said that to Joy, I was like, you need a little joy, been a little bit gloomy. And now look, the sun is out and it's so happy and it's warming up a little bit. So shout out to Joy because obviously she controls the weather. That's the only explanation. over to Canada. I'm gonna head into Canada far and wide. Really great show. I will say I'm walking past La Cellier and some of the festival booths that are still open and even just the maple popcorn and y'all I'm getting hungry. I'm about to have to call out for lunchtime because it's time. It's time to eat. Really like this queue uh, mainly because there's benches inside which you don't often find around Disney so I'm gonna go pop a spot somewhere and enjoy the next eight minutes of my life. She said no video recording, but you can see Legend that I'm here. says the word Canada comes from Kanata. Beauty and the Beast sing along is super cute. Uh, I love that actually everybody in the theater does sing along. I mean, it's hit or miss sometimes. People are like, no, nah, I don't want to sing. But uh, 
that entire theater was singing along. It's one of those situations where, like, if everybody does it, nobody looks stupid. It's it's a very, very fun thing to do, and even. Um, the uh, the narration is done by Angela Lansbury, and she's like, "Listen, kids, the dads don't usually sing along; they just mouth their words. So you make sure they're singing." I don't have a lot of time left before we have to meet for lunch. There is a part, a part of the rules say that we have to meet once for lunch or dinner to make sure one we're not overexerting ourselves and we're you know staying safe and doing all the things we should be doing, eating all that jazz. But I believe that uh, time is actually at one o'clock, which is in 20 minutes. In 12.55 I can book my next lightning lane and I don't know what I want to do yet. I don't think I'm going to travel until like until you know 3.45 over to studios because I'm going to do a bunch of things back to back to back rides wise. I'm still going to think on it but for right now I'm going to head all the way to China which is over there. Uh, the American Adventure is too long uh, for me to do right now. It's, that's about like a 30 minute show and it already started at 1230 so we missed it but Reflections of China is a quick movie that I think we can do before we have to meet up for lunch so I'm gonna make my way to China walk all the way around the world and see a quick movie about China. Okay finished Canada far and wide. It's very beautiful. I think it's not necessarily a must do for your Epcot day but I do think if you have a crowded day like today and you want to get out of the sun and just have an easy thing to do this and um, Reflections of China is a great option. I did go ahead and tell Sage it is time for lunch. I'm very hungry. So I enacted the lunch clause. That's not a real thing that we do, but I'm doing it right now. Okay, we had lunch. It's on me. I, 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 yeah, no, you're the star, babe. <laughs> it's on, <laughs> on Sage. We had lunch. Mine was weirdly delicious. Mine was good too. I literally, sunshine season, shout out to you. The sign's back there, but it's so overexposed. No one can see it. No but I even got salt and I was like, well, I'll need to add a little salt to my vegetables. No, beautifully seasoned. Beautifully Creamy seasoned. Creamy, buttery potatoes. Creamy, buttery. Shout out, sunshine seasons. <laughs> now just to keep adding to our insane day. The lightning lane for Soren All the way up is there. right here. I'm circling it with my finger in case you can't see it. It's currently 105. It's 100 late. for Soren. But just so you understand, the Soren entrance to the lightning lane, all the way. Keep going. Keep going over there. So I, I think we both are feeling terror. <laughs> <laughs> what the rest Which of the hills? I, that was the last lightning lane I, I, I booked. You got Soren? No tower. Oh. Terror. Ah. Uh, uh, of course. The, oh, I get. No, I'm with you. Area. Okay. <laughs> right before lunch, three caballeros, uh, figment, um, the seas with Nemo and friends. They were all 50 to 60 minute waits. After lunch, which is now uh, two o'clock, uh, they're back down to like 15, 20, 35 minutes. So, okay, it says 15 minutes. So. Let's make this happen. Okay, we have gone our separate ways. Now it's time for my landing lane for Spaceship Earth. We're actually towards the tail end of it because it happened through lunch, but that's totally fine. We're gonna tap in and then I think I'm gonna try to start making lightning lanes for Hollywood Studios because frankly, it just feels like a, I don't know, it feels like a fool's errand right now. And if Hollywood Studios is anything like Epcot is, we're gonna need them. So let's hope we can, get some good stuff done. I have a Remy's Lightning Lane uh, in about 30 minutes. 30 minutes. So I think I'm gonna do Spaceship Earth, walk through Journey of Water, head to Remy and then head on out. I will say I'm now regretting doing Spaceship Earth because it's all the way up here at the front and I'm gonna have to go all the way back into France. So just be aware when you're making your lightning lanes of where you might wanna be. I figured I'd be here earlier than I am. So just kind of got thrown off and that's okay. You can always change your lightning lanes. Fun fact, if you did not know that, if you don't like it, you can try to get it earlier, move it to later, or even just cancel it and switch it to a new ride. Now I was looking around, none of the options to modify really were working for what I wanted. So I'm gonna walk up here and then I'm gonna walk to the back and it's all gonna be great and fine and fun, but something to be aware of. Looking at everything that we have on, on uh, uh, my Disney Experience app, 
and everything we have planned for Hollywood Studios later. Looking pretty good. I think the last thing that I could probably attempt to do here before we should probably head over, uh, the other reason we want to head over um, sooner rather than later is because we do want to rack up as many points as possible and you can do that by meeting characters. But we didn't meet almost any characters here other than Joy just because the lines were so long uh, and I, I didn't have time to wait 25 minutes for every character. Uh, that would have been a poor use of my time. So I think the last thing I have time to do here before we head over is potentially single rider for test track. Oh man, boy was I wrong. With the time that it took for me to get uh, across the park, it went from 90 minutes to 130 minutes. The lightning lane looks like it's all the way outside of the building. So we're gonna attempt single rider and see how far that gets us. I mean, we're passing everybody, so we'll see what happens. Okay, I discovered my future um, on Spaceship Earth. I love Spaceship Earth. I think it's an Epcot must do. It's a classic. Spaceship Earth was great. I'm going to quickly, hopefully, run through Journey of Water, and my Remy Lightning Lane has started. And then we're gonna head to uh, Hollywood Studios, I guess. I don't know, it's not really a guess. It's like, for sure, that's where we're going. But This is a beautiful interactive experience where you learn about the life cycle of water, but it is themed to the beautiful Princess Moana. And oh my gosh, y'all, I cannot speak highly enough about this experience. It is so neat. It is one of my favorite things Disney has done in recent years. And to a lot of people, it might seem boring, but I think it is really touching on what Epcot was meant to be while kind of bringing in that new Disney IP. I just love it, I think it's so much fun. And kiddos love it, adults love it. It's a lot of fun, it's interactive. But I'm gonna take the dry path, we're gonna get out of here, and it counts. Okay, after what may be the longest 15 minutes of my life, trying to fast walk back here and through Moana. I'm fine, oh my gosh. This is the lightning lane for Remy. I think I might give up on it, to be honest. Even though we walked all the way back here. So I can't even see the building. I've set a timer for 10 minutes. We're gonna see just how far we can get. If I'm not making real progress, I'm leaving this line. And that is so insane to say. And I would never ever recommend this for your vacation. You've paid for that lightning lane. You were up early, you grabbed it. But I have priorities and those priorities are leaving this park to go to Hollywood Studios and do my next lightning lane over there. Uh, which I did go ahead and make a lightning lane for over there. Tower was almost gone. It was down to like 8.30ish. So I'm gonna grab one for tower. I did grab one for tower. And I would like to go see some shows, meet some people before the lines all close off. So it's probably what I'm gonna do. Well, after being uh, kind of stuck for about 15, 10, 15 minutes uh, because the ride was down, uh, I decided it was worth it because Emma was, I think she was still in line for something. And I think, uh, you know, waiting for 10 to 15 minutes is a lot better than waiting in a 45 minute line for a spaceship Earth. So we decided to stick it out and luckily it's back up. So fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, I have a minute in my timer left and I'm just now here next to the Grivery Debris. I, I'm gonna let it run out, but I think, I think I'm gonna have to ditch. And I, I want to emphasize that I do not think that you should do this with your lightning lanes. That's a long time to wait for a lightning lane. However, Remy is 170 minutes right now. So it is still worth it to utilize the lightning lane to stay and wait. Well, I also heard someone in line say that Remy was down for a little bit. And so I wonder if a lot of redemptions are here right now. Sometimes that's gonna happen. They're always gonna prioritize that lightning lane because you have paid for it to try to get you through. But I do think, okay, I've got 25 seconds left. I told myself if I was at the doors, I would wait, but we are obviously not at the doors. We're quite away from the doors. Okay, heading out. I'm actually, I'm so disappointed, but again, this is more of a competition than like a perfect day. If it was a perfect day, honestly, I would have stayed, but gotta do what we gotta do. Okay, now I will say this line is for Aurora. Look at this. This is actually not as bad as when I first walked up. Oh, just the way back here for Miss Aurora which she's very deserving, but 
still. It's not typically that long. And that's all she wrote for Epcot. Uh, Emma and I, I think, I think Emma is on the same timeline as I am. At least when I texted her, I, th I think she's going to leave too. But uh, we're going to head to the car uh, and we're going to hop to Hollywood Studios and we're going to start to knock out some of these lightning lanes. Now, big bummer is that because it's so busy, almost everything is taken up. If we haven't gotten a lightning lane for something at Hollywood Studios, they're pretty much gone at this point, uh, other than the occasional alien swirling saucers. But even alien swirling saucer is up to eight o'clock tonight. Uh, it's a 65 minute wait for alien swirling saucers. So I don't ever feel like waiting for uh, alien swirling saucers. So I think just for my own sanity, so I don't have to wait for that line. I think I, that'll be my next lightning lane. Because Star Tours is only a 30 minute wait, which how does that make sense? But off we go to Hollywood Studios. Literally the biggest race of 30 minutes, 40 minutes of my life. But I will say, for me, I know I don't want to wait to get over to Hollywood Studios because characters and shows do not run all day. And that's going to really, really matter because the wait times over there are also crazy. The lightning lanes are almost all gone. So I think I need to get over there sooner rather than later. Okay, so now I'm on my way out and I see Sage just standing here. Brother. So the other thing I was gonna look at before I left was are some you of these meeting? <laughs> Are you leaving or are you meeting characters? Uh, no, I was going to, but I I would I think there are more characters over at Hollywood Studios. This is, this is ridiculous. You're gonna die when I tell you about my Remy Lightning. I well, I thought you might be on the same timing because we talked about this at lunch, but did you not do it? Oh my You're gonna die. <laughs> well, we made it. We made it. I don't know how you feel, but sometimes car hopping really like kills my momentum. It does. Like, it makes me a little sleepy. Because you get in the car, the AC is cranking, you're sitting down, it feels like the end of the day, and then, uh, and then you, it's like you're, it's like you're restarting the day. You've got to like, you got to, you start walking uphill again. Yeah, I, I need to check this and then we're going to have so much fun doing I don't know what yet. Right, well, because your strategy is to just go with the flow. Yeah. It's working great. So like I don't even, you know, I don't, I don't know why you're acting so confident. I'm not, I'm not acting confident. So I'm not acting confident. I'm 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 enjoying your no strategy strategy. Okay, for my first thing, I am headed over here to do some characters at Disney Junior Dance Party. The animation court animation court. Oh, you're like fully in line with me. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I hand to my heart did not know you got in line. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, honestly, meeting the Disney Junior characters by myself is not typically it, it, my favorite. It feels a little strange. As a grown man, like, again, there's no there's no shame, but, like, I don't have my it's just daughter with me. Well, we don't know the characters as We well. don't know the characters that well. Yeah, and they can tell it. I think they can read I, it. They can tell. So, this, so I'm using this as an excuse to meet these characters, but okay. just with you in line, because my okay. stuff doesn't start for another 20 minutes. Oh. Fair. We're just doing a challenge today, but we both wanted to meet you together, so that way we're on even footing. That's right. Yeah. It's a, it's a strategy. It's it a is. strategy. That's right. You you understand strategy, just like ball, like ballerinas. They have to do like 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 football players and ballerinas. They both do strategy. So we just met Fancy Nancy for posterity. I'm gonna tell you guys my plan, and then that way, if he follows me, he will know. I will know. But okay. I'm whispering to you. You can see he's behind me. I'm gonna meet these characters down the row and then go into Disney Junior, hopefully around 4.15. Okay, we just met Fancy Nancy, but I'm gonna let you know. I just talked to them. I know, but I have to let them know my plan. Oh, go away, okay. quiet. All right, I have to let you know my plan. So the first, so the first uh, lightning lane that we have is at 4.05 for Slinky Dog. It is currently 3.50. I think we can make it through all of these uh, Disney Junior characters and make it inside for the 415 Disney Junior play and dance uh, and then start hitting up those lightning lanes. So that will be one, two, three, four, five points right then and there. And then uh, and then we'll start hitting up our lightning lanes. Did you hear any of that? What? Did you hear any of that? What'd you say? What do you mean? No. <laughs> no. You guys, what did you say? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't. Shh, don't tell her. Hello! Hi, friend. How, how are you? How are you? My name is Doing Sage. Good. This is Emma. Yes. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you. We're big fans of your, of your dance moves. I just got to know, what's your favorite one? Is it Monster Stomp? Is it... That's a good question. Uh, no, oh. no, no, sorry. No, I'm sorry. Bigfoot Stomp. Right? That's what it is, right? Bigfoot Stomp. There you go. I'll remember. That's good. 
perfect. Oh, of course. Oh, that's your favorite band. That makes sense. Yes. Okay. I love it. You've got, oh, wait a minute. Oh, you've got all the poses. Who's this? Damn. Oh. Damn, Maria. <laughs> Hi, how are Hi, you? Friend. Good to see Doing you. Good. Oh, I'm so, <laughs> so sorry. No, 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 don't be no, sad. <laughs> Oh, it was my fault, I no, you're good. No, you're good. I it's good for the video, honestly. So you did great. Oh, so we're showing our friends where they can meet your friends and yes. you. It's all the way yes. in there. Yes. Lots of good stuff. But can we take a picture? Would that be all right? And now, heading into Disney Junior Play and Dance. So uh, a DJ comes out and he welcomes a whole bunch of characters. It's a super condensed show, but it's basically a chance for the kids to get up and dance and have a good time. And they play some music from Disney Junior, from your favorite shows. Um, it's about a 10 minute show, so we'll see this and then we'll probably part ways. very cute good time and it was honestly I had more fun watching it with a friend um, now I do think there is one more showing of Beauty and the Beast live on stage it's in about 20-ish uh, minutes so I'm gonna head over there maybe get a snack because you can do that uh, for outdoor shows you can eat during the show and I'm weirdly hungry still I don't know why I keep bo bothering you guys with that info it, it impacts you in this video none but I think I'm gonna grab a snack and then head over. Now it's time to ride some rides. We're, we're, we are 25 minutes past uh, when our first lighting lane got called, so we're gonna try and do as many as we can back to back. Then we're gonna see if we can do more characters. But I'm feeling hopeful, I'm feeling good. Uh, I think the strategy worked out because of how busy it was to just completely focus on getting a, a lightning lane for a different park, even though I was in Epcot. So, Hope that works. On to Slinky Dog Dash. We made it. Slinky Dog Dash is a roller coaster attraction. Lightning Lane enters here. All right. It's a roller coaster attraction where you hop on the back of Slinky, Slinky Dog, and you zoom around all through Andy's backyard. Now, because it is such a busy day, all of a sudden I'm nervous that we're going to miss one of our Lightning Lanes because the Lightning Lane goes all the way out to here. Now, it's probably going to be about a 10, 15, 20 minute wait just to be in the lightning lane, which is a lot better than 180. Standby is currently 180 minute wait. Whoa, that's insane. All right, looking at the, all the times, everything we booked, I should be okay. Um, my uh, Mickey Minis Runway Railway just got called at 4.30. Um, so uh, it just, it's just now, it's now 4.36, which means we should have plenty of time to get in, head over to Mickey Minis Runway Railway. Uh, but the only thing that makes me nervous is specifically we're going to miss some of the characters and that's how you can ra uh, rack up a bunch of points as we're doing these ride race challenges. Remember, it's not just about rides, it's about all attractions, characters, and shows. How much can you do? All right, we made it in. We have uh, about 10 minutes until the show starts, so we're going to just chill. I literally ate all my fries waiting. I was so hungry. Tunes. We need the sweet tunes. Uh. Okay, walking out of Beauty and the Beast is really cute. Um, wait times are still absolutely crazy. I think it said Rise was 140 and Slinky was 180. I did go ahead and make a lightning lane. All lightning lanes are gone for today um, at this point, except for like the smaller shows and Star Tours. 
So I went ahead and made one for Star Tours because it's still a 30 minute wait, which is disheartening to be honest. That is one of the reasons people tend to get frustrated with Genie Plus is because you've paid all this money and then on days like today, uh, sometimes those wait times or like the good Genie Plus times are gone until, you know, it's only 5.30 and they've been gone for a while. So that's why we have tons of Genie tips and tricks videos up on the channel. If you want to learn more about that to prep for your summer and how you're going to use it, definitely check that out on the channel. Um, now I have about an hour until the last Frozen Ever After show but I am so glad I went early to Beauty and the Beast because that theater was packed. It was kind of crazy. So I think I might try to go see like what BB-8's wait time is and maybe Darth Vader. All right, I have approximately, I got in line at 4.30. It took me about 30 minutes to get through. And now after the, riding the ride, we've got about 20 minutes left of our uh, Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway Lightning Lane, which obviously we're gonna be just fine because we still have our, our grace period, but I'm just nervous about all the characters we're not meeting. After Mickey Minnie's Run Runaway Railway, we will have some downtime to meet more characters, do some of the more filler attractions like Walt Disney Presents, uh, Muppet Vision 3D. Uh, we're not gonna do anything too long because obviously we wanna do things that are, you know, that are quick and uh, get us the, uh, as many points as possible. But I, I do know that Emma didn't uh, get many lightning lanes for Hollywood Studios because she was so focused on Epcot. So this might work out in our favor, unless she's just only meeting characters for the rest of the evening. Which, in that case, she might, uh, she might swoop in and take this from us. Made it over to Star Wars Launch Bay. It says 25 for Chewbacca, 10 for BB-8. If that's accurate, we're gonna go ahead and do that and then head over to Frozen. Cause that way I can at least meet two characters rather than just uh, Olaf. And it's about the same amount of time, a little bit more, but I think it'll be worth it. Now, I'm probably gonna hop in line for Chewbacca's first if it looks smaller because his line can get crazy, but BB-8 tends to stay low. Chewbacca's looks every bit of 25 minutes to me, so I'm gonna meet BB-8 first and then try to hop in line for Chewbacca. Hopefully they won't close it off. They've already closed Darth Vader's off for the day. Um, they turned his sign off and it's a 45 minute wait. So, hopping in line for BB-8. Mickey Minnie's Runway Railway. Ooh, that lightning lane is, again, about to, literally right now in this moment, it's about to head out the door. Mickey Minnie's Runway Railway is a trackless dark ride starring Mickey and Minnie. It's the only attraction to star Mickey and Minnie, uh, ride anyway to star Mickey and Minnie. It's got a really cool technology where instead of turning 2D things 3D, it actually does the reverse using sets and props uh, to make things 2D. The whole point is that you're here to see Mickey and Minnie's premiere of their brand new short. Obviously things go awry and you ended up uh, bursting in the middle of their cartoon. You go through the screen. Now they could have completely redone all of the Chinese theater because previous, uh, previously to Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway was the great movie ride. One of my favorite attractions, Cassie and Dustin uh, from DFB, their favorite attractions. It was always my dream when I was a kid to be a gangster in the great movie ride uh, just because I liked the death scene. <laughs> Go figure. I think every good villain needs a good demise. Anyway, they could have completely replaced it, but instead they made it work. Uh, and it's basically like you're visiting the Chinese theater for a Mickey Mini uh, premiere, which I think is uh, a great way to um, kind of work with what you have and tie in some nostalgia for people who love MGM Studios, a great movie ride. Hi, BB-8. Look wonderful today. Just had to check on you, make sure everything was good. Yeah. Do you mind if we take some pictures? BB-8 is always a good time. He's very cute. Uh, traditionally, the cast members will communicate with you so you know what BB-8 is saying, but he was a little bit quiet today, so I just ended the conversation early because if you guys don't know this about me, I sometimes get a little awkward with characters and don't know what to say, and that's okay if you're the same way. Just ask to take a photo, and then it's, it's done. Now it looks like Chewie's still 25 minutes, so we'll hop in line for Chewbacca. Now, it's been a hot minute since I met Chewbacca. I actually just got to meet Darth Vader because we just did a rides race that was Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom. Um, so I met Darth Vader then and did not get to meet Chewbacca. So now I'm gonna do Chewbacca, but typically he is like a full 25 minutes. Hey, Chewie. 
I have my own little droid with me today. Would you mind if we take some pictures yeah. together? Thanks. <laughs> I, I've just been at a loss for what to say to characters today, but he was very sweet and cute. And it's six o'clock on the dot. Um, so they did go ahead and close his line off, which I'm really glad that I went in the order I did. So I was able to meet Chewie, not worry about that. Um, BB-8 line, they just closed. So I feel good about our choices. I think we made more progress by meeting those two than meeting just Olaf too. So I'm not upset, but that is for the most part, the last characters you can meet in this park, Mickey and Minnie, you can still go meet um, at, I believe it's called Red Carpet of Dreams, but it's on Commissary Lane. We might do that later, but it typically has a pretty high wait time. So we'll see if we end up there. But for now, I think maybe it's time for Frozen Sing Along. I'd say. We do have some downtime, so we are gonna hit up Vacation Fun, Muppet Vision 3D. I am, um, Olaf is a 30 minute wait. I don't think we're gonna do that. I am gonna check on um, Red Carpet Dreams with Mickey Minnie because doing that is a two pointer and could be super worth it. But, you know, they're here pretty late. You know, this is, so yeah, let's just do this. Vacation Fun starring Mickey and Minnie is a 10 minute short. Uh, it's basically, it's a brand new short, but it is kind of a montage of all of the different shorts you can find on Disney Plus. Basically, Mickey is getting ready for his vacation with Minnie Mouse, and he keeps remembering different times uh, that he was either traveling across the world or going on different vacations because the, vaca the vacation they're going on is the coming here to Disney World. So it's very meta, very silly, very fun. Uh, one of the only shows you can't film in, so I'm gonna film this and then we'll uh, keep on keep it on. Okay, here we go. For the first time in forever, our Frozen sing-along celebration. This one is a very cute show where the Arendelle historians come out and they kind of tell you about the history of Arendelle and you get to sing along with some of their Arendellian anthems and you happen to know them. It, they're fairly famous. Let it go, for the first time in forever, you know, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. It's so cute. They're so funny. Probably my favorite show here that isn't like Fantasmic. I just adore it. Highly recommend. And I'm here about 15 minutes early and look at the crowds going in. So glad I ended up coming on. When all is said and done, uh, <clears throat> don't forget to take a picture with Potato Land, one of my favorite silly photo ops. The very last lightning lane I was able to acquire uh, was Star Tours. I can't book again until seven o'clock tonight, but there's nothing else I can book. Uh, I could continue to modify to get uh, to, to see if something comes up, um, but I'm not gonna do Rise of the Resistance because that is one of the one of the longer experiences here at Hollywood Studios, and time is of the essence. Uh, Smuggler's Run, I don't need that because there is a single rider attraction that is always uh, always has a shorter wait. Rock and Roller Coaster at the time of filming is still currently down for refurbishment. So there's not a lot that I, I think I got everything that, that I needed to get here um, in order to be successful. We have Star Tours, we have Alien Twirling Saucers, surprisingly. We've got Toy Story Mania, uh, we've got Tower of Terror. So we're just, we're just trucking along here. We're doing a good job. And now for one of my favorite attractions, we're gonna head into Muppet Vision 3D. Muppet Vision 3D is about a 15 minute 3D uh, show where the Muppets, in their own Muppety way, try and show you everything that they know about uh, 3D and kind of give you like a fun little cabaret featuring all their favorite characters. One minute? All right, let's ride. Vision 3D, one of my favorite 3D shows. Is it the best? Sure, it's a little dated, but uh, I love the Muppets. The Muppets are a, a place of nostalgia for me. Uh, it's one of the last things Jim Henson worked on before he passed. Um, there are lots of fun Easter eggs, and it kind of dates back to me to one of my favorite things, which is MGM Studios. I love old MGM Studios. Uh, I love the, uh, the behind the scenes, how do we make films as opposed to putting you inside the film because that's what the other three parks do. Um, so I love anything that still resembles old MGM. Now I think it's time to head to Star Tours. 
Everything right now, character-wise, is pretty long. Uh, I haven't checked Star Wars Launch Bay yet, but Red Carpet Dreams, we're looking at a 45 to 50 minute wait. Meeting Olaf at Celebrity Spotlight, that's a 30 minute wait. So I think, <laughs> remember that strategy that I talked about uh, when we first started this video? That is just not what's happening anymore. Just because I, I can't. It's, everything is so crowded. Um, I, I have to just focus on my lightning lanes and do some of the uh, filler attractions. <laughs> lightning lane currently has uh, a little bit of a wait here. Star Tours The Adventure Continues is a motion simulator attraction where you hop into a, uh, a Star Tours ship. Supposed to, you're supposed to be giving a tour of the galaxy, but C-3PO ends up in the, in the cockpit for some reason. He, you know, he's uh, taken over for the captain. are out of characters. Done so. All the characters are done. Um, this is how time worked out. That's okay. I'm curious to see if Emma just like knocked through these characters because if she did, she definitely had the upper hand on me. Uh, that's okay. Uh, she's very good at what she does. So am I. So right now, I think my next uh, strategy is I think I am going to head all the way down Sunset Boulevard to do Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. And then hopefully by the time that's over, it'll be time for Alien Swirling Saucers. For some reason, I thought I had <laughs> Midway Mania, but I don't. And I don't know what happened. Uh, that's just another big um, thing that can happen when you are dealing with so many lightning lanes and keeping an eye on everything on your phone. You're constantly on your phone and it can get um, a little wobbly from time to time. All right, looks like we got about four more minutes until the doors uh, open for us. Uh, I just asked the cast member, they said, uh, even though the sign outside out sign says 15 minutes, it's just a stagnant number because it's a continuous show. So we got four more minutes until uh, Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy happens, but Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy is a super duper short, maybe 10, eight to 10 minute show starring a really cool Lightning McQueen animatronic. Lightning McQueen is basically on a simulation, like on a track simulator that you can find in uh, Cars 3. And he's teaching us all about what it takes to be a racer until Chick Hicks, um, you know, basically hacks into the simulator. And uh, it, we've, got, we've got to prove Chick Hicks that, that we know what it's like to be a real family, a real team. Okay, I finished Frozen Ever After, but then I realized I'm pretty sure I missed my Star Tours Lightning Lane. But there is a 15 minute grace period for after your Lightning Lane ends. I think I have two minutes left in it, one minute, one minute left in it, but I could be wrong because I can't do math apparently when I'm stressed out slash working or living. I can't do math, I'm, I'm just can't do math. So we're gonna attempt this. Oh. Oh. We literally were 30, I'm not even kidding. 30 seconds away from them kicking me out and or not them kicking me out we were literally 30 seconds away from them not being able to let me use it so that's so exciting and I'm so glad that I remembered that because oh my gosh I would have beat myself up for that I think I'm gonna make my way through Toy Story Land to Galaxy's Edge get in the single red line for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run come back this way do Alien Rolling Saucer and then then I think the last thing we have to do is Tower of Terror and, and then Fantasmic, which hopefully we should get a good seat for Fantasmic since we're ending kind of early because it's so busy. It's like if, if you ever see it this busy, you can't just arrive to Fantasmic 15 to 30 minutes beforehand because you probably won't get a seat. As you maybe saw earlier, people were lining up uh, an hour and a half beforehand to get to Fantasmic because the show is just that worth it. So if we're able to end 
around like being, being done with everything by 8 30 that leaves us an hour to get a solid tea for phantasmic and then call it a night <sighs> which oh gosh i don't know how many points that gives me i don't even know how many points emma has i i'm typically more on top of this i don't know how well we're doing oh gosh Hey, Emma, well, how, how are you doing? What's happening over there? We're back here, and I couldn't forget about the way to my heart, Muppet Vision 3D. Muppet Vision 3D is a really fun show that you can watch here in Hollywood Studios where the Muppets have built Muppet Labs, and they want to do this new thing called Muppet Vision 3D. They invited tons of scientists from all around the world. Hi. Um, but none of them showed up. So the Muppets did it instead. And it was, it's very cute, lots of fun, very silly. And now I, I'm very partial to it because I'm a Muppets fan, but a lot of people skip this one. One of my favorite things about uh, these ride races is being here at night. Now, typically we, we're here at night when we have our perfect days, uh, but nine times out of 10 when we're filming, we are done around uh, five o'clock, six o'clock, sometimes earlier. Because, you know, we have lives, uh, we want to go back to our families, we're here almost every day. So we want to have dinner with our families and, and our, our significant others or whatever. Uh, but during these ride races, we're here obviously from a park open to, you know, past park close. And I love seeing, I love seeing the, um, the park at night. It's a completely different style, it's a completely different view. You're really getting... Uh, a perspective that you wouldn't get during the daytime because this is when the lighting designers come in and they really bring this park to life at night. Oh, I love it. All right, standby wait is currently 70 minutes, but we're gonna hit up the single rider line, hoping for a uh, easy breezy, beautiful cover girl single rider line. All right, it's officially time for our 720 alien swirling saucer. Then, uh, we can kind of mosey, and I mean mosey because uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else for us to do here. Uh, mosey on down to our 8 o'clock Tower of Terror, and then get in line for Fantasmic, get a snack for a, a job well done. Alien Swirling Saucers is a family attraction where you are being pulled by one of the cute aliens and they're whipping you around. It's a lot of fun. This is Fry Bucket's one of, one of Fry Bucket's favorite attractions. Uh, and I know I give it a lot of heat. It definitely is like, it, it, it's, it's a fun ride, but the only reason I give it heat is because this is definitely uh, something that you could find uh, at, at a carnival, except uh, this version is just larger and has the characters from Toy Story. Hey, leaving up at show, gonna head towards Vacation Fun because Vacation Fun and um, Lightning Theme Racing Academy both close at eight and I'm gonna have to choose one, which really stinks. Um, but I'm gonna head towards Vacation Fun and then we'll see where we land. I think I'm gonna have to choose one. I don't think I'm gonna get to both. Haunted. Okay, also on our way out, I just wanted to show that the um, hydraulics food stand is partially revealed now. I'm actually weirdly super excited about this. It's just gonna have some cinnamon rolls, mini churros, like snacky things, but I'm excited. I'm always excited for a new spot and there's seating. There's seating next to it and they just unveiled it today while we're filming. Uh, so that was really neat. And if you want more up-to-date information, like if you wanted to know day of, uh, just make sure you're following all ears net the blog you can get our newsletter or you can just follow us on social all of it's very exciting and up to date and a little bit faster than our videos okay here it is this is vacation fun animated short with mickey and minnie and i will say this ride looks a lot cooler at night than it does in the daytime so if you're gonna ride it and you're gonna wait some time for it try and ride it at night because they got some cool lighting kind of turned into like an alien toy story rave Whoa! That was it for vacation. Now there's a lot of really cool like photo ops out here as you're exiting. And one of them is Potato Land back there. It's very cute. Um, now I'm gonna, I don't think I have time for lightning. I don't know where I'm gonna go. We're gonna figure it out though. Probably a ride. I have one lightning lane left today. <laughs> Clown decisions and behavior. It's fine and we're fine and I love it and we're fine. I have a lightning lane, I forgot. I made my tower lightning lane literally hours ago. So I'm gonna finally go over to tower and then honestly, because it's been so busy and I wanna do Fantasmic tonight, I'll probably have to go ahead and get in line. But I don't feel horrible Emma. about what- What are you doing here? Where are you going? 
Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 We're in the line for Tower of Terror, and one of the towers closed on us. Two of the elevators, actually. Two of the elevators closed on us because they're dual towers, and uh, the, we were in line for a long time. And by the time we got to Fantasmic, they were done, sold out. Yeah. It was very crowded today, though, so I don't think either of us are surprised. No, that let's get better up. light. Wow! wow. They don't look like <laughs> One, two, three, 26. 24. Oh! Overall, between 24 to 26 things, that's not a bad day. On a day like today. On a bad. day like today, where things were 180 minutes long. Uh, my, when I got in Slinky Dog Dash, 180 minutes. Yeah, I pulled, I didn't even talk about this because it literally didn't matter, but I pulled the 7 a.m. virtual Keeper Guardian, didn't get called till 4.30. That's wild. The 7 a.m. Yeah. So I think for everything that happened today, I'm not disappointed. Our if you guys like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch our Rides Race Challenge where we park hop between Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. Do you want to recreate Fantasmic right here because we missed it? Does a worm have lips? <laughs> Bye. Oh.